Hi there, Bob here with JD Squared. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, in this video here, um, I'm getting ready to take the new XR6 rotary cutter and I'm gonna be replacing our RC6 rotary cutter with this one. I have to do all the videos of how to start it up for people who've got them on order and all. But before I do that, it occurred to me, I've got a, a unique opportunity because we have all three versions of machines here. We have the Pinocchio machine back in the corner, we have the RC6 cantilever machine, and then we got the new XR6 gantry machine. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to each machine, tell you the pros and the cons of each machine in this particular video. Look for other videos, hopefully later this week, uh, if you got an RC6 on order, or you're planning on it, or an XR, uh, XR6, I mean, uh, or an XR12, I'll be setting this up here this week also, so we should be having videos of the XR6 actually milling aluminum, uh, plasma cutting, square, channel, stuff like that. We're gonna try to spend um, the next four or five days just trying to bang out as many videos as we can to introduce the RC6 to the world. Anyway, thanks once again for tuning in. Let me reposition the camera and we'll start in the back corner. Let's go ahead and start our discussion at what I refer to as a Pinocchio machine. I call them that because kind of like Pinocchio's nose growing, goes out the front, these machines operate the same way in that they feed the tubing in and out of the machine. Let's real quick talk about the pros and the cons. The pros, there's two that I could think of. One, they're easy to manufacture. Uh, I could probably build four of these before I could build a single traveling head machine. So from a manufacturer's point of view, that's a pro. From a user point of view, there's only one pro that I could think of. These machines are suitable for doing short piece work. So let's just say you're making ATV control arms and they're only about yay long. You wanna feed them out, cut them, drop them into a bin, you're good to go. That is a, a case where this kind of machine can actually be beneficial. However, it needs to be tuned, the servos and everything for that particular weight of material. Don't forget, as you're cutting material, you're changing the weight that the servo is moving through. Servos have to be tuned to a particular inertia to get the best possible performance out of them. And they don't like it when the, uh, the weight changes much. That's why we decided after three attempts to build a Pinocchio machine, and we think we built one of the world's best, we finally gave up. The deficiencies were too much. Um, it had too many problems and the traveling head machine didn't have any of those problems cut way, way better. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the cons real, real quick. One of them is it takes up a tremendous amount of floor space. If you're gonna load up a piece of 24 foot tubing, the track behind the machine has to be able to accommodate that 24 foot plus the carriage, plus the space behind the stabilizer, everything else like that. So you're out somewhere around 26 and a half feet. Now you get to the front of the machine, you add another four feet, you're over 30 feet. So the machine is actually physically larger than a traveling head machine. All right, now the problem is it does feed the tubing out. So as it feeds the tubing out of the front of the machine, you have to have space allocated to handle how far out the tubing can be fed. Now, this is an OSHA issue right here. If they come in your shop and you're feeding 20 feet of tubing out of a Pinocchio machine and it's operational and you don't have a guardrail around that entire thing, that's an automatic fine. I heard it was $10,000, I don't know, but it's a fine. So you don't wanna do that right there. Now, if you do wanna do short pieces, OSHA believes you could put a permanent fixed barrier in front of the machine that will absolutely prevent the tubing from going any further than that barrier. And it has to be a permanent barrier. It can't be something that you just remove out of the way because they know you're gonna cheat, you know? So if you do that, you can get away with it. Okay, so that's a problem right there. Um, by the time you put the guardrail, you got a machine that's 55 feet long it's just ridiculous amount of space. All right, let's look now at the cut quality. As I mentioned, servos like to be tuned for a particular load. They wanna know what load there are. Well, as you're cutting your tubing, the tubing's getting lighter, or you just start off and you're gonna start your day with a piece of three quarter inch tubing, three feet long, doesn't weigh anything, right? Cut that. Now you're gonna load up a piece of four inch, quarter inch wall square tubing. How are you gonna cut that? Hell, let's say half inch wall. Our traveling heads will handle that no problem. That isn't even an issue. 
These kind of machines, it's a big, big problem. Um, one of the problem is, remember, as this thing feeds a tubing out, let's just say you're going to cut a 20-foot section, right? That means somebody, when it, cut, when it cuts out the first end, it's going to start feeding out. Somebody has got to walk along with it to hold the tube up. It's going to sag. Yes, you can make a tray system that would help. That, that could work. But now you truly got a 50-foot long machine, right? And they've got to stand out there. If they don't have that installed, they've got to stand out there and hold the tube. That itself is a violation of OSHA right there. You'd be fine for that. But that's how you have to do it. Now, let's exaggerate the problem or exasperate it. Let's take a piece of four-inch tube like this here. It goes out 20 feet. Who is strong enough to hold that kind of weight? Because remember, square tubing doesn't roll through your fingers real good. It's square. It's going to clunk, 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 clunk. That's why on traveling head machines, we use this right here. And this happens to be a four inch ring adapter. So what we do on the traveling heads to get away from that problem is we put a set of rollers over there and then we load up the ring on the tubing and we place the ring where the rollers are, no problem. We could spin it all day long. We could process that entire piece of pipe, never miss a beat, you know? Okay, <clears throat> let's come over to what's another problem. Um, leverage problem. This is the big problem with these machines. As you feed the tubing out, it's coming out of the front of the machine. So picture this hand here is the stabilizer right there. This hand here is the chuck pushing and turning on the end. As I feed out, you can see what's happening. We right here we have leverage, right? We got we're effectively at this point in midpoint carrying the entire weight of the tube at that point, right? Now, uh, because we're in the middle now, as we shift this way, all the, you can see what I mean. I mean, it's a tremendous amount of weight. Now, imagine if you were cutting that four inch square, half inch wall, that thing goes out. What happens? Collapses the front of the machine, destroys the front of it because the leverage is too great. That chuck on the back of the machine can get within to about nine inches of the front of this. So you're trying to hold like, let's just say a 20 foot piece of anything by nine inches on the end, you know, a tremendous amount of leverage. So that's a real problem. And I have heard the nightmare stories of people who have other machines and they collapsed the front of the machine, destroyed the machine, um, and wasn't covered in a warning because they overstressed the machine. It is what it is. All right, let me see. I got my list here. Um, oh, the last one is a uh, real problem with this, which was the game. It just killed it for us was through coolant, where we pass coolant through the tubing while we're cutting. The difference between cutting with no coolant and cutting with coolant, night and day. You, wouldn't even, you won't even believe it. Just the amount of cleanup time is amazing because you don't get all that slag adhering to the inside of your tube. It's coated. So you can just rub it off your finger and pull it right out of there, no problem. But what happens also with coolant is you're cooling the bottom side of the tube. So as the plasma stream is shooting through the top and hitting the bottom, Without coolant, you are superheating the bottom side of the tubing. So as it rolls around to the cutting side, it is now hot. All cutting tables are based on room temperature metal. They're not based on hot metal. So therefore, your cut quality is going to suffer. You're going to get more slag. Coolant helps to um, minimize that greatly, and that's why all of our rotary cutters have coolant. Okay, that's really about all I could think of saying about this machine, other than the fact that... Um, I dislike Pinocchio machines so bad that we will never produce one here at JD Squared. We really think they're that bad for the user. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on over now to the RC6. Okay, that brings us to the RC6. This is what we call a cantilever machine, and that's because it uses a cantilever to hold the torch. So if we look at it right here, you can see the cantilever going in and out, and then the machine, of course, you know, will, you know, will go up or down like that. You can actually hear the automatic lifter lift up, which all of our machines have also. We can't put on a rotary on those, but we have automatic lifters. Anyway, this is a cantilever machine. Now, the reason I like cantilever machines is a lot of customers buy our machines, and they're doing things like 10-inch and 12-inch channel, and they're not even rotating it. They're laying it flat, kind of like that, and they're cutting all their holes and everything like that, and they're basically making stairs. It's a huge industry, right? Well, it's very easy in this machine to bring a forklift, load it from the side, drop it in and go, no matter where the head is. So that's a major, major plus. 
The traveling head machines, all of our machines come with through coolant so that we can get the optimal cut quality. We don't have to worry about servo tuning because once again, the servo is moving the carriage. It knows what the weight of the carriage is so we can optimally tune that servo to get the absolute best cut quality. Um, we have different kind of attachments that we could put onto the RC6, a round stabilizer, a square stabilizer. It has a tray with a reservoir to catch all the coolant. Doing things like we talked about right here with the ring adapter, very easy with, this, with these machines because it comes with all the tooling necessary for you to do that. Um, the other thing we put on all of the travel on the traveling head machines is a floating head. So right here, the head floats up or down. Now the reason it does that is if you get rusty pipe or something, you may not make a good electrical connection between the nozzle and the workpiece, so the machine never knows the material is there because it didn't get the signal back. With a floating head, if it doesn't get that signal, the head will rise, trigger a switch, and then by knowing the offset of how, long it, how far it has to travel to trigger that switch, we know where the tube is and we can start cutting even without an electrical connection. Now that has a lot of advantages on the XR6, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, all of our machines, of course, have magnetic breakaway head, so that's a standard feature on the RC6. Um, there's really not a whole lot else to talk about the RC6. Um, you know, describers, everything. Bottom line is, this is the machine that we are replacing with the XR6. Now, we can still manufacture these. There's no problem there. There's too many advantages in the XR6. So, without further ado, let me bounce over, and I'll tell you what I changed on that machine that I learned about on this machine. That brings us lastly to the XR6. Why, if I like the RC6 so much, did I change it? And it has a lot to do with this option that we are currently developing right now. We hope to be done with it here in the next few weeks, a drill head. A large number of customers want to be able to drill holes because no matter how you try, you cannot laser cut or plasma cut a hole that you could then come back and tap. So they want to be able to drill holes, tap holes, things like that. So we needed a mount of drill, which meant that the entire structure that held that drill had to become heavy, very robust, and very rigid. So that meant we had to go from a cantilever machine to a gantry machine. That's what happened. Now, that brought with it a tremendous number of advantages, one of them being with our new drive system that we have on the XR. We're using Yaskawa servo motors now, some of the world's best servo motors. We have much greater speed, over double the speed, than that machine right there, rapiding, you know, moving up and down. Cut speed could be about the same because you're limited by how fast the plasma can cut. But the new drive system in this machine actually produces slightly better corner cuts than all of our other machines, even though they're all running servos, just because these servos are that good. They are very powerful, so they're in and out of corners very quickly. So if you're doing something very sharp, these servos are boop, boop, they're, they're done, and you've got a sharp point. Whereas if you had a stepper motor machine, they, they don't have that kind of power, so they're going to slow down. They also have very low resolution. The resolution of this machine here, I believe, is in the hundred thousandths number range, not ten thousandths of an inch, hundred thousandths. The motors are extremely good. All right, some of the other changes on this machine, I've widened the frame up because on the other one, we could handle 12 and 5 eighths inches, which meant we could handle 12 inch channel. This one, I took it out to 15, uh, 15 and 7 eighths of an inch, a little bit more. It got a much more powerful motor under the power head right here. Same power head design as that one, except that this one has got those new motors on it. Much, much more powerful. They're also designed to move in and out. The whole head assembly will move in and out, up and down, so that when you load tubing into these machines, you never have to adjust all the rollers and the supports for the tubing going up and down because you bring the chuck to the tube, if you, if you follow what I mean. There's other videos that, that I'll be shooting later this week that'll show you every feature in this machine. We've moved, the pow we moved one of the control boxes up here, the amplifier box. The reason is, is we're gonna be developing a full tilt head, six axis option that will be able to bolt on anybody's XR6 here in the near future. That's what we'll be working on here as soon as I get the drill done right here. That's a huge thing right there. 
We also are currently building an XR12. It's a 12 inch machine. Um, I, I did a video the other day and I showed just the frame that we had machined up. Basically, it looks like this machine. Everything is big, much bigger chuck, bigger power head, much wider machine, much taller. It's just a bad machine is what it is. I mean, it's bad to the bone. Um, the regulators over here are so that we can control the stabilizer, which isn't in the machine. I will be installing that here in the next few days, so you'll see that video. And you can control how much force the stabilizer is putting onto your tube. So if you're doing aluminum pipe or something, you may not want a lot of force on it because you don't want to mar your tubing. Now, here's the beauty of this machine. We can mount routers here. Right behind me, um, I've got our table that has the exact same carriage system, and we have a 24,000 spindle um, in it, 24,000 RPM spindle in it. We could do the same thing here. So what you're going to be seeing me do over the next, hopefully within a week, is we're going to show you how we process aluminum tubing. And we don't plasma cut it. We literally mill it, and I mean it does a beautiful job. It's really loud. You're getting ready to find out about that, but it does a beautiful job. And we couldn't do that with the cantilever machine because putting the, the spindle on the end worked great for doing like PVC and wood. It didn't like the aluminum. So that's another advantage of the XR6. I've also made the XR6 extremely easy to install, and that's why we're doing this video. As I mentioned, I'm getting ready to, to remove that machine. I'm just going to relocate it so we have it here. And we're getting ready to replace our daily machine with the XR6, and you'll see it cutting. I've got a feeling when I go to set this machine up, I might only have an hour in it. I mean, it's really, really easy. Whereas that machine, you did have to sink lugs into the ground, level it. Took a little bit more time. It wasn't hard, but a little bit more work, whereas this machine is much easier. Now, you can kind of see the sections. There's the mid-leaf in the middle on the floor, and then you've got the trailing section down there. So this machine's about 28 and a half feet long and can handle 24 foot tubing or pipe, no problem whatsoever. So that is just some of the advantages with this machine here. The new control system, for instance, we can now, not only do we have more power, we can also control more functions, up to 32 motors. We can control nine coordinated axis, almost unlimited number of input outputs. So when you see a lot of extra little holes, all this stuff like that, that's for things I've got in my head for the future. And I'm kind of talking about playing with an auto loader next year. Now, anything I design in the future for these machines will be able to bolt directly onto anybody's machine who has one. So if you got one of the machines, I think there's 11 of them being built right now. Um, and, and it takes me a little bit of time to get the tilt head going and the drill. Just rest assured, you're going to be able to put all those on your machines. We've got you covered right there. Anyway, I just wanted to do a quick overview of the differences of the machine, um, their pros and their cons, um, before I actually move this thing into place. So I want to thank you for watching. I should have hopefully the video up tomorrow night of showing us installing this machine because like I say, we're getting ready to start delivering these things in hopefully a couple weeks. And um, I need all these videos done so that people get their machine, they'll be able to install it. So stay tuned for those. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great night. Goodbye.